Ty Davis Price is the running back next to Johnson. And they'll go play action. Want to go deep first play. That's aggressive. And Butte has it broken up. A pair of defenders there for the Chippewas, including Deshaun McNary and Alonzo McCoy. Boy, we talked off to coordinator Jake Peets down on the field. He said, look, I want to be aggressive. I want to push the ball downfield. Here we see first play of the game. Three verticals. You've got Kayshawn Boutte running straight down the middle of the field. It's single high safety, so Max Johnson has got to get his eyes on that backside corner. That's who ends up making the play. Got to move on if two guys stay over the top. Johnson threw for 162 yards and three touchdowns last week against McNeese. On second and ten, Davis Price picks up five. And remember, left tackle Cameron Wire is out, so Xavier Hill will be the starter. Just a freshman there at left tackle. And Central Michigan has a few talented pass rushers. Troy Hairston is an all-defensive Mac player. Keep an eye on that left tackle spot. His protection has been a little bit of an issue for LSU the first two weeks. Mac Defensive Player of the Year coming from the end and a great story as well. Push up front. Johnson has to leave the pocket. And he's able to complete it. That'll go for a first down to Jack Besh. Now you're going to see a game over on the right side of the defensive line. Two defenders lined up outside the tackle. You know something's coming. Jason Hines takes one right in the chest. I think his left leg may have gotten tripped up a little bit. But Max Johnson has the awareness to get that football out in time. After the first down, here's Butte on the edge. First man misses, and then he rumbles for a gain of 11. It's evident, Cole, that they want to get the ball to Kayshawn Butte, even if that means getting creative with it. Going to try to move him around. He'll get the push pass that you'll see, kind of the jet motion in front of the quarterback, maybe hand it to him a few times, line him up in the slot more so than he's used to. Want to try to get him in a position where he's most dangerous against the defense. And here's Butte again, taken down by the first man. That's Gage Kresge, who was a high school basketball star in the UP, St. Ignace, Michigan. Great open field tackle there as they try to dial up the exact same thing, just flipped it. You can already tell there, though, the pace, the tempo is much quicker. Not looking to the sideline to get a play and change it once the defense gets set. Jake Peets, first-year offensive coordinator. Here is Davis Price again. Pete's formerly spent time on Saban staff at Alabama, most recently with the Carolina Panthers. He's a Nebraska product, was a walk-on for Bill Callahan back in the day with the Huskers. Here on a third down, with no Kayshawn Boutte on the field. This is really getting an idea who their go-to is. Need to find that number two, especially with Trey Palmer out. He's their second best receiver. So who does Max Johnson go to here on third down? Letting the clock run here on third down. Chippewas bring four. Johnson goes to Besh again. And this will be the second first down for the freshman from Lafayette. Boy, this is such a good job by Max Johnson. He wants to throw the deep out to the field, but a flat defender gets underneath it. Watch his eyes. Starts out wide to the left. It's not there. Works back in for his check down and a first down. Besh rewrote the record books at St. Thomas Moore about an hour west of here. The lefty Johnson looking down the sideline. It is under throw, but caught! Touchdown, Deion Smith! Went right on the top of Dante Kent for a 28-yard touchdown. This for a start for Max Johnson. This is a great job here down in the red zone. Just give your receiver a chance to make a play. And oh my. I mean, that is, you can't get better coverage than that. That is just, that's Randy Moss right there. You just got Matt Moss. Smith of 6'3, climb over the top of the five. Yeah, I'd keep it on my LinkedIn page from here to eternity.
Just Jacob Sermon, the kind of kid that you, you don't recruit at Central Michigan. You hope to get in the transfer portal. Extremely talented. Khalil Pimpleton is their leading receiver, and he gets bottled up there for gain of one. Derek Stingley Cole making a physical tackle that may have been missing last week. Well, and that's something talking to Ed Orgeron about in the UCLA game. Said, hey, we had a couple of guys that maybe would have been perceived to have made business decisions. Derek Stingley being one of those, but Coach O told us he hadn't tackled the entire camp. The UCLA game was the first time he was in full pads and actually tackled live through fall camp. Lou Nichols the third is the Chippewa running back. He's got great talent and speed, and he's trying to find the edge here. He does so, and he's able to scramble before Damone Clark brings him down after a gain of five. Just so everybody's clear on what a business decision is, right? I mean, that is deciding you're not going to risk a physical tackle or the risk of being injured for a certain play because you're looking for the future, the yeah. NFL per se. And so this team that's stacked with talent, that's the job of Coach O. Get these guys motivated to win games like this and get back to a championship. Central Michigan was fantastic on third down last week. They're going to be just short here, it looks like. Joseph Evans stops Bracey. And now they will move the chains. It's a Central Michigan team coming off of an impressive win last week against an FCS opponent. But a lot of points put up against Robert Morris. And that was after they opened the season at Missouri. Jim McElwain wasn't available for that game. He had appendicitis. Had to undergo surgery midweek he watched the game he said from his lazy boy whoa big hit and the ball came loose picked up by lsu and andre anthony touchdown tigers after stingley forced it out Business is booming. Yeah, if there was any question about the message delivered to Derek Stingley, that has been answered already. First couple plays. This is an NFL-style hit. Stingley did just make a decision. It was not business. He chose violence. That was unbelievable. I think he chose pleasure. I think he likes those hits. Wow. Officially a 32-yard return after the forced fumble. Watch the speed to which he closes here and delivers a strike. Look how he raises as he's running through the defender. I mean, that is just... You can't teach those instincts. You can't teach the closing speed. Look at that. Someone wants to make some noise tonight. Number seven's on a mission. He has been one of the best in this program over the last couple of seasons. After a freshman All-America campaign during their national championship run, York punches it through. LSU is answering the questions early on against Central Michigan. They came in nearly a three-touchdown favorite. They look even more so thus far. Yeah, and I think the those type of plays permeate the physicality, the nature, the culture that Coach O wants to continue to develop on this team. Sure. Those plays do so much more than just get six points the other way. That sets a tone this week. That sets a tone for the rest of the season when your star player that will be a top 10 draft pick says, I don't care. I'm playing lights out. I'm like this every snap. Durante Jones, defensive coordinator at the forefront of that picture. And yeah, his defense has played really well through the first couple of weeks. But we talked to him a long time about, and both of these guys, both Jones and Pete's, about reaching college players and making that communication. He told Andre Anthony when he got here, he said, I want to make you better. You let me know what I can do to make you a better player, which is a very NFL-type motivation, right? If I can make you better, get you to the next contract, you're going to listen to me. And a lot of times you have to make these players, not just make them better, but get them to a place where they are good. Yeah. You have to develop them. You have to develop the fundamentals before you can make them good to great. And that's the biggest difference, I think, from NFL to college. You know, last drive, Coach O mentioned, he said to Cole, I want to call a play, I don't want to run it. Look, look to the side and you want to change it, Cole? Nope. Leave it on, you throw a touchdown. How good is that? I love that. Love that. They do the check with me. I think Coach O said, no, no, I don't want any of that. Call a play. Let's run it. Let's let our guys win. Big play.
play right there by keeping that play and not changing it. Deion Smith able to climb the ladder. Chippewa's offense right back on the field. After the scoop and score by Andre Anthony, the New Orleans product. And they'll go straight ahead with Lou Nichols. Nichols had 135 yards and a touchdown against Missouri. He also had 40 yards receiving. He was sensational on a Saturday afternoon at Mizzou. Andre Anthony's not giving him that space today. And that's something that Coach O and Durante Jones want to see out of this defense. Stop in the run. Gave up over 200 yards to UCLA. Had some really bad tape that they showed. They want more physicality in the run game at the point of attack. On second and nine, they get it out of the backfield to Nichols, and he's taken down immediately in the open field. A gain only of three, Micah Baskerville there. So really, really big third down here for Central Michigan. Already in a 14-point hole early, early in this game. Got to sustain drives, take some time off the clock. Watch this bunch to the top of your screen. Tigers showing pressure. They bring four. Ford got to Sermon, and he shovels it away to Nichols. Heads up play by Sermon, and it turns into a Chippewa first down. Wow, really, really good play here by Sermon. He's actually trying to find Pimpleton off to the right. B.J. Ojolari with the pressure and just find your outlet, right? As a quarterback, as soon as you step up in the pocket, it should be like second nature. My check down, where is it? Bam, great job there under pressure by Sermon. Central Michigan last week against Robert Morris scored on five of their first six possessions. Different challenge here. Deep ball, open, too strong for Pimpleton. Missed opportunity for Central. He had Khalil Pimpleton downfield too, but it was again B.J. Ojolari. Look at the hit he delivers. This is a ball that would this will be a touchdown if Sermon doesn't take this hit and have pressure in his face. Does that change the launch angle? Absolutely. Ball gets away from him a little bit. When you when you have pressure in your face like that, sometimes you end, you end up trying to throw it harder, and that's when you get those overthrows. Now second and ten. LSU defense swarms Nichols, and he had nowhere to go. It's a loss of two that time. It's D.C. to Mo Clark back there again. Another big play. They've had some first-rounders playing at the position recent memory. Devin White, a couple years ago. Clark's been around the program, played behind those studs for a while. Third and long. Backpedaling, fires, intercepted directly into the hands of Major Burns. It's the second LSU takeaway. A flag on the field after the interception. And we'll let the officiating crew sort all that out. 29-yard return for Burns. Following the change of team possession, personal foul, illegal blindside block on the defense number zero. That 15-yard penalty will be enforced from the spot of the foul. First down. That's Mason Smith, the big defensive lineman, is going to play some in tonight. They got flagged for the hit. Well, they're getting some man coverage underneath, so they're trying these crossing routes. You see one come from the right to the left, and one from the left to the right. But Major Burns sitting back there looks like some sort of cover two, man cover two. So 28 sitting back there, reading the eyes of the quarterback the entire way, and just cuts that ball off. But well, Demone Clark had the hit on Sermon, and LSU once again will have a short field to work with. They already have a scoop and score. On a fumble return touchdown by Andre Anthony. On a fumble forced by Derek Stingley. Look to the sideline to check a play, and they don't. Once again, pressure coming. 
Johnson eludes it. And Devontae Lee. Just short of the marker, going to be a gain of eight. Good pocket movement there by Max Johnson as well. Some pressure to his left, stepped up. Down the short throw to the sideline. Ball on the ground, and it'll be Tyron Davis Price who wins the game of Hungry Hungry Hippo. Jaquez Bristol looked like the one that got through there. See number 10, yep. That was that late shift, so the movement right before the snap that changes the blocking scheme for the running run game up front. You see Ed Ingram trying to get across there, but his guy went from outside left to inside right. And he wasn't able to get in front of him. Almost a turnover worthy play there. Swimming pool of a kid ever have the uh, greased watermelon over 4th of July, maybe Labor Day? That's what it looked like. <laughs> yeah, no no yeah. one could get it. Loss of 11. Besh has a couple big first down catches. They motion him to the slot. Flag down over the middle. Complete. Should be a first down forward progress. It's Devontae Lee again. But we'll wait and see what the flag is about. The Hedrick are referee tonight. Cole, it's an offensive line that has been a ragtag group. Formation on the offense. Number 76 was not lined up on the line of scrimmage. That's a five-yard penalty. Austin Deculus, who returned to action this week. It feels like even though they know each other, they're getting to learn playing with each other. Well, it's not all about having an understanding of just what your job is. It's working together, like you guys just mentioned. Jordan showed it a few moments ago. You get a pre-snap shift, and that defensive line moves. Not all communication can be verbalized. You have to have that understanding that either your guard or your center is going to come with you if you're trying to work a combo or scoop up to a linebacker. You have to have that wherewithal of everybody around you. Play clock nearly ran out. It did, as a matter of fact. So that'll back them up even further. The way of game. Coach not happy about it. He's about 10 yards out onto the field. Those are kind of some of the things that we were talking about before the game. Stay clean. Stay crisp. You look good early, and now kind of starting to sort of venture off into some of those habits we saw in the first two games. Play calling becomes a game of telephone. Peach is making the call. It's got to get it signaled in. Max Johnson, you saw after the whistle, was saying, hurry up, get me the play call. Hangs a U-turn on Nicholson and fires it to the sideline. Uh, I imagine that can be a very frustrating situation for a quarterback. There is no foul for intense round. Absolutely. I mean, especially. The box in the pass lane would be on the line of scrimmage. Fourth down. Unintentional grounding there as he was outside, but especially because LSU runs about 86% of the time they're in five man protection. So there's a lot for a quarterback that he needs to sort out before the play, right? He needs to find out where that most dangerous guy is to change the protection right before you snap the ball. So as a quarterback, if I'm not getting that play, then I don't feel comfortable to snap it because I need to know who's coming and who's not and where I'm protected. 430, time to play. They have an hour drive to the airport, yes. too. I mean, I don't know. I can't imagine doing that as a player. I mean, I did that in junior college, right? We literally had our helmets and our pads sitting next to us on the bus to the game. But that's junior college, not flying to Baton Rouge to play. Jeez, LSU. Play LSU, and they got them bottled up. And Joseph Evans with another big penetrating stop up front for the Tigers. It's a loss of three. Well, that's just pad level from 94. Joseph Evans winning the leverage game at the line of scrimmage. 94-92 have been bulldogs for this LSU defensive line here early on. A lot of penetration, a lot of disruption, a lot of white uniforms going backwards on offense. A lot of work in those shoots. Yeah, staying low. Staying low. Third and long. Nichols. 
Out of the end zone to find a couple. Derek Stingley another stop in the run game. Stingley all over the place. It just, it feels different, right? This defense feels different. And, and, and separate from the caliber of opponent, the energy, the athleticism, the aggressiveness, both on offense and defense, just feels a little different tonight for LSU. Now there's some thought from those around the program that, that last week felt more like week one. And so the improvement you see in most teams between week one and week two could happen tonight. And that was because of LSU's own travel itinerary. They got all messed up with Hurricane Ida and spent a week in Houston before going to Southern California. Coy Moore. And a flag, a couple of them coming in. Well, you know it's serious. One of the officials lost his hat. He and Cole go to the same stylist. During the return, illegal block in the back on the receiving team number 38. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. You've thrown your flag and you're out of things to throw as an official, you throw your hat. On the outside. Deion Smith is really turning into a guy that Max Johnson has a lot of comfort with. Taking shots down the field. The last one more of a 50-50 ball that Johnson put up for him to make a play. This one, he's got a step on him. Johnson put it right out in front. Cade York, point after. No time needed. Three plays, 63 yards, under a minute. Max Johnson missed on his first attempt of the game on a deep ball to Butte. Since then, he is 9 for 10 for 127 yards and two touchdowns. That's pretty good. Pretty I'd good. say uh, he's in the zone. He's feeling it. But again, what have they done different? Well, they've called a play, they felt comfortable with it, and they ran it. All right, anytime you start to change the play after the fact for a quarterback, even if you have time, your whole process starts over. Yeah. Now, you know, you're looking up at the play clock, it's ticking down. Now you're trying to re mic, you're trying to figure out what the concept is, reread the defense relative to the new play you called. So sometimes call a play. If it's not perfect, that's okay. There'll be an answer for it. A lot of times tonight, though, it's been perfect. This is a much livelier LSU squad than we saw last week against McNeese. Scoring touchdowns is a uh, it's a beautiful drug, Tom. <laughs> it's it does one wonders. Way, one way to describe it. <laughs> LSU was addicted two years ago. <laughs> they went into hiding last year. A five and five season. Dante Smith getting coached up. Hey, thanks to Wheels Up helping make travel easier. Jordan was at SEC Nation in Gainesville this morning and here tonight. The atmosphere for you the last two weeks. Arkansas two weeks ago. Gainesville today. And that turned into an incredible finish. A battle. Florida battling at the end. Felt like I could have told you that was going to happen too because Gainesville Gators fans came out in droves this morning. They were loud. They were ready. David, I was impressed with that defense of Todd Grantham's in the second half. Holding Alabama to, I think, a, a touchdown and a field goal in the second half. Did you kiss a Gator this week? I did, yeah. I kissed a hog last week, Tusk, and I kissed a Gator this week. I don't know what's wrong with me. Joel's calling. First and ten, and a little floater to Nichols, and he's blown up. But you can tell it is contagious. It's Baskerville that time. Guys are making plays tonight. When you simplify your approach, as I think both sides of the ball have tried to do with Durante Jones and his scheme and Jake Peets and his scheme on offense, guys can play faster. They can make plays like this. They can react quicker. They're not thinking. They're just playing. Fourth LSU tackle for loss tonight. They came in leading the nation in sacks. They've held the Chippewas to just 19 total yards. Trying to get it around the end and nothing doing. They go backwards again. It's Marion Luke's that time. Cole Central Michigan has had some health issues now with the running backs. I understand. Yeah, going to be a little bit lighter as far as how the carries are distributed. Junior running back Darius Bracey came off to the sideline two series ago. The medical team worked on his right knee. He then went to the locker room and has not returned to the sideline. In a blowout against Robert Morris last week in Mount Pleasant, ten different Chippewas had a rushing attempt. 
They also had over 500 yards of offense. Jacob Sermon. Wide open and a chance for the Chips. It's Ja'Cory Sullivan in a foot race. And the sprint to the 10. He'll take it in. Touchdown Central Michigan, 78 yards. Wow. Kickoff and a completion on a slant to Coy Moore. Now, what do you see? What do you see when you watch Max Johnson play? Well, I see especially tonight his eyes are going in the right spots. I think first two weeks his eyes were sometimes lost, going in the wrong spot for RPOs, going in the wrong spot for protection issues at times. I mean, he was either really good or it was bad. Yeah, and he and he told us. He said, "Listen, I had a hard time finding my hots. It was yeah. something that was it's that's challenging easy. for a young quarterback, especially." Y'all, it is not easy when you go tempo. You have teams that get exotic. UCLA was throwing a ton at a young quarterback. He's got to handle the protections while trying to go fast, all doing it really for second or third time he's ever done it. If we're and talking with a new LSU. coordinator. I mean, yes, with a new coordinator. So there's a lot going on. The game goes really fast for a quarterback. It looks like it's starting to slow down for him. How do you facilitate a quicker learning curve when a quarterback-coordinator combo is new? I think you shrink things. You simplify things as much as possible and then really lean on the speed, right? The speed is going to give you an advantage over the defense. You simplify it so you yourself can play faster. Tyron Davis Price, the running back. That's Besh in the slot again. Johnson has to leave the pocket. And he's able to buy himself some time and floats it nearly picked. But try to find Besh behind Troy Brown, who was a fingertip away from a takeaway. Besh threw his hand up there like he was wide open and he was not. I had <laughs> the biggest gripe with Jordan Matthews at Vandy because Jay Matt would be still playing the NFL bounce around. He would be covered by three people and he would throw his hand up. I threw a pick against Tennessee where he was double covered. And I come to the sideline, I'm like, why'd you throw your hand up? He's like, Bro, I can catch it on anybody. I'm like, yeah, but I did it. Come on. Throw well, it up if you're open. Against Tennessee, the jerseys are hunter orange. You couldn't Don't. see them? Yeah, well, I, I threw them a few that night. So, <laughs> you know, hey, at least you completed the meals, paper goods, and canned goods. Goes back to what we are talking about. That one incomplete. When Ed Ogeron, we asked him yesterday, the, the pressure here. To, I, I know it. This is my state. I grew up here. I know it well. Uh, and, and that love, Cole, is reciprocated by the fans because what he was able to produce two years ago bringing an undefeated national championship season. I think that everything that he's done for this program and those expectations continue to increase when you have maybe the best season of college football history. Yeah. Sermon with the handoff, and there's Andre Anthony right there again. Anthony's been uh, on campus for a while, but he hadn't been really playing that much after injuries and issues early in his career. He's kind of walking us through his timeline yesterday, and he said, uh, you know, signed 16, couldn't practice with the team. I could be over here and work out, but had to wait. Then a broken foot against BYU and finally got his chance. And boy, he took off. Third and nine, LSU brings five. Sermon is able to sneak it away, and he finds Joel Wilson from Petoskey, Michigan, for a pickup of eight. Another good job by Sermon navigating the pocket. I feel like to get things going, they got to move his launch angle. They got they got to move the pocket a little bit, reset where he's throwing the football from. Because right now, LSU brought pressure there. They're keying on exactly where he's standing in the pocket and they're hitting home. Wouldn't be surprised to see last year's starter Daniel Richardson get some run for Central Michigan yeah. here in the first half. They want to protect Sermon, who took some big hits in the Missouri game. Luke Elzinga punts it away, 36-yard punt. Look, we mentioned it a few times, five-man protection. So LSU does this 86% of their dropbacks. Five offensive linemen, going to block the four down. And any one of these guys that Max Johnson wants to point, he points to number five, that means if he comes, he's blocked. But if any one of these other guys come, that's when as a quarterback, you are hot. 
here. Two guys come. That makes six. You only have five to block. Find your hot route. At times, Max Johnson did this really well, and at times his eyes just looked like they were in the wrong spot. Yeah. But tonight, he's been perfect. And it's mistakes that NFL quarterbacks oh, even yeah. make. Peyton brought it up on Monday Night Football. As they bounce this one to the outside with Corey Kiner, and, and Peyton made the point. He said he, he pointed to the mic. Who is the mic? But I'd rather identify the safety who can actually get to you on a blitz as, as opposed to the guy who's standing 10 yards away who's not coming, who's going to be back in coverage. 100%. And then you can take it to another level where it's like, well, where's my best, quickest throw? Then I'm going to mic the opposite guy. Because if the guy comes over that route, I'm just going to throw it. It's or hey, for first down. Or I want to take a shot play. I, I'm okay if I have pressure in my face, so I'm going to protect my backside, and I'll just back away from the guy coming at me if he does blitz. I mean, there's a million ways to think about how you do protection in this offense. And the quarterback has total freedom to yep. make those decisions, even though he might get coached up on the sideline after. 100%. Johnson hands it off here, nowhere to go for Kiner, the freshman from Cincinnati. And now so McCoy in the stop. And you know, looking back to 2019, Joe Burrow, was unbelievable under pressure. People stopped blitzing him because when you blitzed him, he would find the hot route every yeah. single time. And it was a dink or a dunk here or sometimes a big time throw, but he made you pay if you blitzed and that got teams out of that. I thought Bryce Young was great against pressure week one against Miami. He was. Made some good throws under pressure tonight as well. Second down 11, Johnson delivers to Brian Thomas Jr. who fights for extra yardage and turns in to a nine-yard pickup. The four-star recruit out of Walker High School here in Louisiana. Here's Kiner again and an LSU first down. LSU still without John Emery who's got some great issues that he and his family are trying to figure out but he's been on the practice field and working as a scout team running back been rocking a touchdown and a completion from joe burrow that's a nice little trio to have and that guy might be the next one that's playing on sundays Butte is going to be a superstar and i mean you got a timeout had some time to think about it first down past the uh the 40 yard line there i'm not so sure we're not going to see them dial one up for number one right yeah. now Right here at the bottom of your screen. He runs it out. They get it to him, and he lost his footing. Otherwise, he's getting ready to make a move. It's a pickup of six. How does that, I call it a little, that, that out pattern affect what they do later on with him? Oh, it's a, it's a chess match, right? Any good offensive coordinator is going to set things up. So. Next time you do that, you have him run that out, but 11 then goes on the post to keep the safety in corner, and then Butte runs down the sideline. Everything sets up something in a good offense. Now at the top of the formation, in the slot, number one, Keishon Butte. Oh, there he is. And on a crossing route, he's able to find Deion Smith again with Butte going to the other side of the field. They wanted to throw back across the field to Butte, but I think Johnson had to continue on the runs there. there so great job finding the other crossing route that was open. And here comes the tempo. The throw again. Johnson gets taken down as he lobs it in zone, and Butte couldn't make the adjustment, lost his footing, and it went off the face mask. Looked like the pressure got to Johnson there. Couldn't get enough on that ball. That hit was a little bit low, Jordan. It did, and, and that's that's why it came out so low as a quarterback. Can't get your lower body into it. Got someone coming at you because Butte had a step. Yeah, he's just feeling it there, so he's stepping away from that throw, trying to protect himself. Didn't get enough juice on that ball, and it's a tough play for Butte to make coming that far back on that route. Cole Taylor now in a tight end for LSU. And they will go straight ahead with Davis Price. Oh, he was lucky he got down because James came in as a head hunter. Harvey Jones came in. This will be the 10th play of the drive, a third and seven. 
That's where I'd love to see them start to get Cole Taylor, the tight end involved. In. Oh, and there he goes. He's just coming out of the game. Boy, is it a quarterback I loved a big 6'7 tight end. Not that I ever had one. But if I would have, I would have loved that in the red zone, you know. But what do I know? Get some more speed on the field. Well, they have so many weapons, including that one. It is caught for a first down by Devontae Lee. There's only one ball to play with. You got these great wide receivers. All over the place. And again, look at Johnson. That time, I don't know if he had to retreat as much, but he's been doing a good job of throwing accurately on the run. Good job there getting your feet down on the outside. Davis Price plunges forward for a couple. That'll leave second and goal from the two. The tight end position is interesting. And it's keep waiting for when and if it's going to be utilized the same as, you know, Thaddeus Moss was yeah. in 2019. Thaddeus Moss was eight, or excuse me, fourth on the entire team in receptions. I mean, he had 50 plus receptions. They used him a lot. Colt Taylor's a guy that can do it, just hasn't been a focal point yet in the season. Four grabs last week against McNeese. Toss to Butte. That'll go as a pass, and that'll go as a touchdown. Right in front of Cole. Great view, Kublik. Two-yard touch pass to Keishon Butte. I told you, Tom. I told you they were going to throw him a touchdown. Eventually. Not sure this really counts, but oh, it counts in the scoreboard. Network crew tonight we will take the party to Tuscaloosa next week. After the Crimson Tide held on. A big win in the swamp. Avery Atkins will kick it away. Nick Saban has been provided plenty of teaching opportunities with his young squad here a few weeks in. I'm not sure what I learned more in that game. More about Alabama or more about Florida? Yeah, good point. Really need to watch that tape. I'm interested to see how Florida was able to slow Alabama's offense down in the second half because honestly first quarter looked like it was going to get out of hand you know what gets out of hand cold tailgate let's take a look at fansville brought to you by dr pepper great rolling up to the stadium today seeing fans here at death valley and ready to <laughs> enjoy the game it was hot today after an early thunderstorm that's why they said never rains in death valley you can play night games here you get all the rain out of the way, clouds are empty by the time you kick off. I brought the good weather. Yeah, you did. Thanks for bringing it. 56-1 over the last 57 home non-conference games for LSU. Straight ahead run. And Central Michigan with another big play. This is Lou Nichols the third out of Cats Tech in Detroit. I'll tell you what, it was a really good block by number 44, Hunter Butchkowski. The fullback getting in there on Micah Baskerville. Interesting little play there. Fullback inserts inside like an old school ISO play. Takes on the linebacker one on one. Cole, you asked about Butchkowski this week, and Jim McElwain's eyes timeout lit up. LSU. That is their second charge timeout of the half. I just really felt Tom watching the film. On the Central Michigan offense, he was a big part of what makes them go. They move him around a lot, H back, fullback. Sort of traditional fullback. You'll get him offset, kind of in a wing position off the line of scrimmage. He's lined up as a tight end with his hand in the bait. I mean, he's just a guy that does a lot of different things for this offense, and I think that's one of the reasons Mac likes him. He, he told us, he said, hey, he's a bit of a throwback. You don't see guys like him all that often, but he can do a lot of different things to help stress a defense by adding some physicality in a lot of different places on the field. Local product out of Mount Pleasant High School. I, I thought it was really neat of you as the president of the Hunter Butchkowski fan club to try and get him some touches within the offense. Not touches like that, not a, not blocks, but like, hey, let's throw them. Throw the guy the ball a little bit. I'd be fine if you handed it to him, honestly. All right. Thing is, though, like a lot, lot of, you know, some of the prima donnas on the outside need to touch the ball to feel better. That guy just needs to hit someone in the face. True. He's like, oh, I'm good. He needs to trade paint. Sermon gets it away and it's dropped. Big opportunity for Khalil Pimpleton. Pimpleton had a pretty good game against Missouri. 38 yards and catches. It was a number of guys on the field in that Missouri game that, and, and I don't want this to be misconstrued, it's a compliment. They look like they belong on an SEC field. 
Yeah, Sermon, the quarterback, absolutely looks like he belongs. He's talented. Pimpleton as well. Lou Nichols, the running back. They got a handful of guys that in the MAC are really, really good players. Second and ten. This one caught, and it's Joel Wilson, the tight end, who's able to pick up four. This is a program that, under Jim McElwain, year number one, 2019, won the MAC West. They went to the New Mexico Bowl. After just one win the previous season, it was a seven-win improvement. They nearly doubled their yardage total. They had a pair of 1,000-yard rushers for the first time in school history. And, and then they backslid a little bit. Then COVID hits, and the roster management was a really curious decision for Jim McWayne last year on what he did with his freshman class. It's led to a very young team this year. Four-man rush, third and six. Behind, uh, in front of the sticks, and a leap forward for Dallas Dixon. Tom, you mentioned those numbers. 115 players on this Central Michigan roster this year. They completed last season with 53 players on the roster. He sent every freshman home and decided to gray shirt them. That's Jim McElwain, the head coach. He actually told us, guys, biggest mistake of my career that I've ever made. 55 redshirt and true freshmen on this football team right now for Jim McElwain. Remember, the MAC didn't know if it was playing last year. When the Big Ten came out and said, yeah. we're not playing any non-conference, the MAC said, we, we won't play at all. And then eventually played a MAC-only schedule late in the fall. Sermon had had time past tense, and it gets taken down by B.J. Ojolari. <laughs> That was a screen designed to go to Butchkowski. Look at this. 44 leaks back across the field. He's got linemen trying to get out in front of him. They were trying to do a little throwback gadget screen to the fullback. There see you go, how, Cole. See how influential Cole Kublik is? Why does it have to be a gadget if it's to the fullback? Can it just be a screen? Because it, he goes by Butch and he's a fullback and it's a <laughs> gadget play, Cole. That quarterback, Lou Nichols, takes the Wildcat snap, and he gets taken down on the logo. There aren't many plays on an offensive coordinator's play sheet that are like, get touches for the fullback. Right. That goes under the gadget category. The Butch special. Yeah. But going back to the, the I scholarship that, I, I think I got that at a uh, super cuts one time. It didn't turn <laughs> out good. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's the only bad haircut you've had in your life. Uh... It didn't make any sense to gray shirt all that, those guys, Cole, because everybody got a free year. They could have been on campus even though it was a limited season. Absolutely. Like Coach McElwain said, just a massive mistake. Wish he had it back, but obviously added eight transfers and six super seniors to go along with those freshmen that are back. Third and 12. They converted a third down a moment ago. Sermon pressured. They got a hand on the shoulder pad. We got a holding penalty that's going to wipe this one away unless it's a sack. Ojolari comes up with another big one. Second sack this possession. That one's a loss of seven. Uh, protection was actually initially really good for Central Michigan. Nice pocket Holding for Sermon. On the offense number 83. But coverage. Really is declined. It will be fourth down. Coverage was great, and obviously the holding there was why protection was a little better than maybe yeah, it should have been. Help out a little bit. Yeah. Sermon's got to get rid of that one, though. As a quarterback, at some point, you just got to chalk it up, throw that ball out of bounds, and move on. Ozingo well, ready to punt this one away. Central Michigan only punted once last week. decision to try to field that one inside the 10. 47-yard punt, a loss of one on the return by Coy Moore. 21-point lead for LSU here at Death Valley. From a product out of Stone Mountain, Georgia, by way of Valdosta State, got to him. Yeah, and he's working on Xavier Hill, left tackle. Remember replacing the injured Cameron Wire on the outside. Oh, yeah, great rip through by Nkum on the outside. Johnson gets rid of it to a wide open Besh. And he's got another catch for a first down. That'll give him some space. Pick up a 31 and a flex to follow. Again, an RPO, a run pass option. So it's going to be a run in this direction. But the quarterback is reading 
this linebacker right now, if he comes, throw the hot route. Linebacker comes in a little bit, bam, replace him. Johnson going deep down the sideline, separation. Caught, first down, Brian Thomas Jr. That one goes for 40. I'll tell you what, I noticed it down on the field in warm-ups, and Max Johnson continues to do a really good job of putting a lot of air on these deep balls. Right, that, that ensures a completion more than anything. Even if it's a play, you got to come back and make a 50-50 ball, putting a lot of air so his receivers can adjust. Now taking a shot to the end zone. Bash hauled it in. Touchdown, LSU. Well, God made us with two hands, but sometimes you don't need to. One will suffice. Max Johnson, 20 at 25, 280 yards, four touchdowns. Jack Besh did a lot of that at St. Thomas Moore over in Lafayette. State championship game record, 232 yards on 10 catches to win a title for St. Thomas Moore. He's also a great basketball player over there. Kate York. Max Johnson continues to rewrite the LSU record book. Achieving history here tonight with another touchdown pass, his fourth. And you go back to his starts last year and what he's accomplished so far this season. It's quite an impressive run for the LSU quarterback. I'm not sure he's had a bad throw tonight. 20 to 25, 280 yards and four touchdowns. But again, his eyes have been the best thing. Where they are, the type of throws he's making, the air he's putting on the deep ball. Laser focused and the best part about this offense is they haven't tried to get the perfect play. They've called a play, they've ran tempo, and they've ran the play and allowed their quarterback to play quickly and find the answer wherever it is on the field. He's found it almost every time. Hit the ground running, didn't he? Kind of goes back to what Jake Pete told us in our meetings and on the field before the game, being aggressive, attacking. No doubt LSU's attacked down the field this entire first half. Different energy on the LSU sideline in this game than they showed last week in a home opener against McNeese. Different body language, different energy, and it's translating onto the field, both offense and defense. This defense has flown around. I mean, I feel like I flipped on the film the first two weeks. I, I didn't see the speed that I know that they have on that side of the ball. I've seen it. I've seen it from the secondary, closing, tackling on the outside. Derek Stingley, I've seen it off the edge. Was it too much processing? Was it I effort? It what been, was yeah. it? Prisoner of the moment. Too much processing. Maybe Durante Jones put a little too much on the defense early on. Sermon gets rid of this one. And Nichols out of the backfield to pick up a five. And an injured player in a Central Michigan backfield. And that is Andre Anthony. Veteran leader of this LSU defense. Boy, he's such an integral part of this defense, playing at an extremely high level on the edge. They're working on that left knee, it looks like. See him engage with the right tackle. Uh, that's never good. It's yeah. never good when it's a, a non-contact type injury. It's like he planted that left leg and 
and felt something. Such a great discussion with him yesterday about where he's been throughout his career and how he's experienced so much here at LSU. Coaching changes through a national championship. Oh, and you can see it on Coach O's face. Just the concern he has for Anthony. Any player, he would have the same level of concern, but you know just what number three means to this defense that maybe it means a little more. Two sacks in his first game at LSU. He said it was a game I wasn't even expecting to play. Some guys were out, got my number called, got out there, made an immediate impact. It will bring Andre to his feet here. Watching his reaction and the training staff's reaction, I feel better about it now than I did 60 seconds ago. Yeah. And him moving his leg like that. Cole, it was interesting. Here's a guy who's been in town for a while, and we talked so much about name, image, and likeness. He used relationships that he has already had and developed to go back to business owners and say, hey, let me help your business out a little bit. Yeah, that's one of those things that, you, that just kind of happens accidentally sometimes as a college football player. Networking, you meet people. People want to meet you. People want to engage with you. He said, one thing that I've learned as I've matured over my LSU career is – to invest in your body. He yeah. said it was something that some of the NFL guys that came back that he worked out with kind of taught him and told him that he should really place it at the top of his priority list. So got an IV place in town, trying to help him get hydrated, stay hydrated. He was using it anyway, and now ends up being a little bit extra money in his pocket in the name, image, and likeness deal. He couldn't talk into the yoga train, though. He tried. Sermon. Able to complete it. Listen, man, I'm, all, I'm all for it. I'm for the flexibility, and that was a part of his growth that he said also he's putting a little more emphasis on Andre Anthony. That is just kind of stretching flexibility, Time trying out. to stay limber. LSU, that is their third and final timeout of the half. You this know who's a, a yoga guy? Timeout. We had Lane Kiffin on uh, SEC Nation this morning. He said, man, I wish you guys would wrap this up because I, I want to go catch a hot yoga before the game tonight. See, I'm just an old school guy, man. I, I feel like I yeah, got to sweat, sweat more, get a real workout in. Just because I'm in a hot room whoa, doesn't mean whoa, I'm getting whoa, a workout have you, have you ever done hot I've yoga? I've done hot yoga, yeah. I'm just, I don't know I'm just if I've ever sweated more in my life than in hot yoga. But listen, this field down here right now feels like hot yoga, as muggy as it is out here. So. Well, limber up, buddy. Let Let's see what you, you got. Cole. Vinyasa. <laughs> Namaste. Warrior 2. Let's go. Cole in hot yoga is footage no one has asked for. We Listen, if we go to Oxford, I'll get Lane on SEC Nation for our hit to hit some hot yoga. Love it. LSU used a timeout and third and four. As Anthony gets help back to the locker room. Jacob Sermon, an efficient 11 of 15 through the air. A touchdown and a pick so far for the Chippewas. And he's able to complete another. This is Pimpleton. Makes some guys miss and takes it to the 45-yard line. The two receivers who Jacob Sermon uses the most, Pimpleton and Sullivan, have been playing football together since they were in fourth grade. Same high school team. Pimpleton went to Virginia Tech for a little bit, then transferred back home to Michigan. And now here's Sullivan. These guys have combined over the last couple of years to put up some monster numbers. Over 2,200 yards receiving, shared 12 touchdowns. The same hometown, Muskegon, Michigan, and they were born just one day apart. Practically twins. At Muskegon High School, Pimpleton was the quarterback, Sullivan the wide receiver. 
last couple plays, LSU given a lot of space at the line of scrimmage, back to pressing these receivers on the outside. Wheel route, tight end Taylor behind, pardon me, Wilson had it behind him. A little out and up. He was there. That's one of those throws talking to Coach McElwain about his quarterback, Jacob Sermon. He said, man, he's super accurate. When he's not, it's his feet. Yeah. And on that throw right there, Sermon never reset his feet to the outside. His feet were still at 12 and 6 o'clock, right? Right down the pocket, you're going to see. Never resets his feet. He's able to generate velocity, which is why sometimes he gets away with it. But accuracy really suffers when you don't get your feet to your target. Why is Jim McElwain always smiling? <laughs> Hit the backfield. And Nichols loses a yard or two. I saw a couple penalties over there earlier where he wasn't. So. Yeah. Jack Leroy with the stop. Under a minute to go here in the first half. Don't need to pick it all up here. I think you're in two down territory with the clock ticking down. Sermon evades pressure, then goes pinballing into the LSU sideline. They're going to keep the offense out there. It's one of those plays where you, you want to try to get half of it, right? You, you already know you're going to go for it on fourth. So Sermon does a good job of not forcing a throw into coverage and instead using his legs to get a few yards and make it a fourth and a little more manageable. We're down six. Chips have all three timeouts remaining. Wow, what a stop. Nichols taken down by Clark and Central Michigan turns it over on down. Well, it's such a good play. Central Michigan with little bunch formation. They're going to send guys on almost trying to pick Damone Clark there. Clark ends up working over the top with speed. Making a great open field tackle. I was talking to a couple guys on the strength staff before the game. Jordan, how about a 375 power clean for Damone Clark? What? A 650 pound squat and they stopped him at 650. Yeah, but it, does he do hot yoga? <laughs> Probably. I bet. To be able to get that low with 650 on your back, I would assume so. Jeez. 307 yards of offense for LSU, including 280 through the air. Max Johnson, 20 of 25, four touchdowns. Hit the locker room with a 35-7 lead coming up at the half. You can watch the live performance from the goal. Stingley tried to work back inside. Sermon put it over the top. So good point by Cole there, though. We really haven't seen Central Michigan push the ball downfield. The one time Sermon had a man, it was Pimpleton downfield, overthrew him because he got hit as he was letting that go. You got to take a shot here on this drive early to at least set the tone of what this second half is going to be for your offense. Here's Joel Wilson, the tight end. It's a pickup of eight. That's going to leave third and short. Another tackle by Singley, but there is a flag on the play. So a legal man downfield after they had found Joel Wilson. It's very easy to say, hey, we need to take a few more shots. Ineligible player downfield on the offense number 88. He was covered up and went downfield. That's a five-yard penalty. We will replace second half. It's another thing when you look left and you see number seven, Derek Stingley, and then you look right and you see number one, Eli Ricks. I mean, those guys don't really give you opportunities very often. Or you look at the defensive line and you see zero. Yeah. Mason Smith, who's now bumped out to the end at 6'6", 292. First zero in the history of LSU's program, and that is a big number on a wide jersey. Smith gets taken down. Sermon goes deep against Stingley, and a flag will go against Derek Stingley. 
First team All-America last season in a five and five year for LSU. He's got his hands up, but he, he got a little too much jersey. Looks like on the middle section of Ja'Cory Sullivan. Pass interference on the defense number seven. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, and that carries an automatic first down. He just watched it up on the re the replay board. Notice he he didn't plead his case anymore. <laughs> right here, yeah. It, it, it's small, but right in front of that referee, it's going to get called every single time. And he knew it. He watched it in here in the stadium. He's like, well, okay. Yeah, you're right. Here's Lou Nichols. Nichols has nowhere to go. Neil Farrell Jr. filled that hole fast. It's a loss of one. It's the physicality. 94 and 92 we're playing with up there is pretty impressive. Cole mentioned it earlier. That's who this defense needs to be, though. The more physical they are up front, the more that they can stop the run with four, play coverage on the back end when they need to. Just two yards on that one to Remy Simmons. Another third down for Central Michigan. Still have yet to really see Central Michigan move that launch point for Sermon. Right, give him some space to work. Don't allow these defensive ends and the defensive front for LSU to just tee off on the middle of the pocket. Looking for Pimpleton. He's covered. Checks down and fires incomplete. Stingley closest man to Dallas Dixon that time. Jack LeRoy brought pressure on him. That time Jaqueline Roy with the pressure right up the gut. Stingley just flagged for pass interference a few plays ago. This time working a little off coverage. But his change of direction so quick. I mean, he can stick his foot in the ground and accelerate back and forth, which makes it so tough to get open on him. Coy Moore back to receive this punt. That was dangerous. There is a flag back just past the line of scrimmage. As it stands, a 51-yard punt. You know when the when the punt bounces like that and everybody's yelling Peter, uh -huh. Peter, Peter, Peter? What Peter ever do? Well, yeah, he yeah. had the Bubba Sparks reference going into the studio well, at halftime, so it was pretty good. Peter, yeah. So I guess he did a few things. During the kick, holding... On the receiving team number 32, that penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal from the end of the kick, first down. So remember how good Joe Burrow was here? I mean, they're going to put a statue up of that guy yeah. sometime. Max Johnson has done something I don't know Burrow didn't do. No SEC quarterback has done it in the last 15 years to throw three touchdown passes or more and each of his first five starts. Pretty impressive. A long list of really good quarterbacks, and especially the last few years. If he, if he stays on this growth trajectory that I've seen just from game one to now game three, well, look out. Well, I, the next place I wanted to go there goes back to Cole on a balance beam this morning is how important will balance be to LSU's offense and getting getting away from being so pass heavy? Is that, does that matter this year? Does it matter in conference play? Yes and no. I mean, the goal of this game called football is to get yards and score points. So if, if you're doing it best through the air, great. Yes, there will be times that you need to run the football. But, man, you lean into what you do best and you ride with it. Up there, uh, now 38 plays tonight. See, I kind of view it a little bit of a different way. I, I, I feel people obsessed with run pass when you talk about balance. But to me, it's about how you force the defense to play you. That's when you're truly a balanced offense. You uh -huh. can throw the ball 75 times a game. 
But if you have the ability to run it and you can force a defense to play you a certain way, that to me is true balance as an offense. I don't care about your statistics of 500 yards passing, 500 yards rushing. It's what makes it easiest for your offense based on how you force a defense to play you. 38 plays so far, 13 rushes and 25 passes. Another in the pass column coming. Great grab. Keishaw Butte goes in the air to pull it down. Wow, this was a laser from Max Johnson. This is a really long throw from the far hash. And a great catch by Butte going up and getting it. Six feet tall. He's got great range, averaging seven yards a catch right now. Leading the nation in touchdown receptions. Taylor in a tight end now. Get the feeling this is the spot where LSU might try to pick up the tempo a little bit, pick up the pace. Going deep. And incomplete. Deion Smith was across the sideline when he hauled it in. They are being aggressive on a first down. Taking a shot downfield to number six Smith. He's he's been the go-to. And just the right foot just out of bounds there. How do you even catch that ball with I don't your know. body torqued like I, that? I don't know. I want to go back to the run pass balance a little bit. This is you're going to We're review this on one and look at it a little more. It seemed incomplete under our review. first review, right? Yeah. So allows us to get in the conversation. Has LSU shown tonight that they can run the football? Uh, no, they haven't. But but again, wh why? What is the fascination? And you there got you go. Left foot down. Is that left foot down? And does he control it? Yeah. When? At what point does he have control? That's a great angle to show that left foot does come down. Maybe we get a behind shot here. When does he establish control? When is that left foot down? Left foot's down. I think he might have that. I think you're right. That's a great catch. Wow. At first first glance, full speed, it didn't look like there was any way, but 28 yards. To that reception. point, what is the fascination with running the football? And I say that with a little hesitation. I understand what everybody's thinking on the couch. Well, yeah, yeah I mean, you need to. But short passing game can be ball control running the football is ball control short passing game requires makes a defense play you tighter exactly what running the football does so so you can have a pass game that in a way is a little bit like a run game but at the end of the day do what you do best so of, of what we've seen from lsu tonight the jet sweeps with the touch pass a couple of screens and passes near the line the of scrimmage RPOs. have they shown enough of those then to be a threat yes absolutely they've shown enough of an ability after review video evidence shows it is a catch great catch the receiver possessed the ball with one foot inbound it will be first and 10 from the 45 yard line now look yes they they should and will need to develop an actual run game but they are able to play ball control with tempo Throwing the football, quick passing game, RPOs, moving number one around, getting him easy touches, and that is essentially the exact same thing yeah. as a run game. Is that the right spot? Well, they're at the wrong yeah. 45. They shorted him 10 yards. Here's incomplete <laughs> to Jack Besh. Somebody radio down 45. We got uh, we got two 45s in every field. All right, they're just gonna you know they're just gonna roll with it. Okay. It's too embarrassing to go back and fix it now. So <laughs> hey, we'll just hope nobody <laughs> noticed, right? Uh, I hope those TV guys aren't talking about it. We missed it by 10 yards. That's right. I think there was some idiot announcer last year that thought they were kicking a field goal from the opposite <laughs> 30. So. Is that guy still employed? Johnson pressured and trying to find Besh again. Troy Harrison is second. Incredible story. Central Michigan defensive end brought the pressure. He first got to campus at Mount Pleasant as a regular student. He was a great, good high school player but was injured. And they said, yeah, you can join the program as an equipment guy. He would run the clock at practices 
They finally allowed him to join the team, gave him a uniform, had a couple sacks in his first game, turned into the MAC Defensive Player of the Year. Johnson steps up across the middle for a first down. Deion Smith having a monster night for the Tigers. Fifth catch of the game for Smith. That one goes for 34. He's got 135 yards receiving. Watch Max Johnson's eyes. They start left. They go back right. He finds Deion Smith, anticipates the throw, waits for the window. That's a great job. That looks like the offense that Joe Brady was running Yeah, here. attacking the middle of the field, right? Something we haven't seen a ton in the first two weeks. Johnson got pushed in the pocket and muscled it down the field. Trying to find Deion Smith again. Great angle from the pylon cam here. Little hand fighting, but I think that was a little too far behind, maybe. Johnson fires, touchdown, Devontae Lee. We've been talking about a run game, right? Got to have a run game, got to have a run game. Well, Central Michigan is respecting the run game despite it not being great tonight. And you're going to see it come from behind win for the Tigers in that one. And over on ABC in Happy Valley, it's a 21 to 10 lead for Penn State over number 22 Auburn. To the back of the end zone and way deep. Let's take a look at the road to the championship brought to you by Mercedes Benz. Jordan's day started in Gainesville and the game started all Alabama early. Bryce Young ends at 22 of 35, 233, three touchdowns. Florida scored on every possession of the second half except for when the clock ran out on him at the end. And Florida's defense made some great adjustments in the second half to slow down Bryce Young because it looked early like Alabama and their offense was going to run away with it. Tell you what, though, that Bryce Young kid, he is special. What's his weakness? Honestly, when I watch him, I think his weakness is that he feels like every play can be a huge play. Sermon drops it off. And Central Michigan has gone to Miles Bailey coming out of the bench. It'll be close, and it will be a first down. Bailey, freshman from North Brunswick, New Jersey. Was a track guy star in high school, two-time team captain, a rush for 5,000 yards. Won the state championship in the 4x100, the 4x200, was second in the 100 meter. So he's fast. He is fast. Look for Pippenton on a pump and go. Covered. And they take him down. Ojalari, another sack. He was escorted in by Jacoby and Guillory. Central Michigan trying to hit a double move on the outside. You see Sermon pump, look, and just completely runs out of time. Offensive line not able to hold up long enough to take that shot downfield. Second sack of the game for B.J. Ojalari. His brother Aziz was a second round pick in the last draft out of Georgia. On second and long, they try to run it with Bailey again. Boy. 44, Hunter Butchkowski, the fullback, H-back, all utility guy back in the game, and he just plastered like a Baskerville again. That dude likes to hit people. Yeah, he does. He's just one of those guys. You know, I said earlier, Derek Stingley chose violence. He chooses violence for breakfast, for lunch, <laughs> for dinner, for, I mean, just everything. I don't think they're serving that at the hotel buffet. You don't know that. It's they true. didn't stay at a hotel. <laughs> That's so. a good point. <laughs> they get to him again. Fourth sack of the game for LSU. Ojalari in the mix. 
Roy was there. It's a three-set game. Oh, pardon me, that's Mason Smith, number zero, got in there. Again, I've mentioned it a few times. At some point, when your quarterback continues to be under pressure in the pocket, you have to change the launch point. What do I mean there? Half rolls, boots, getting him outside the pocket, because otherwise these defensive ends, these defensive tackles, they can set their pass rush exactly where they know the quarterback is going to be. I'd be surprised if Sermon comes back out for the next Central Michigan possession. Yeah. No one was able to tight rope the sideline and stay in the field of play. Goes all the way down to 10. 59 yard punt. No single. LSU came in leading the nation in sacks and they have kept that up. 14 coming in for tonight. Second down 12. Johnson got pressured. Oh my good, was that caught? Wow. <laughs> that was an incredible catch by neighbors. Max Johnson was trying to throw this football away. He's trying to get rid of it right here. Defender goes at his legs, he's not able to get enough on it. I promise you he was not trying to complete the ball to number eight, but hey, what a catch. Malik Neighbors is looking at everybody else's stats and saying, I will take it any way I can get it. <laughs> Johnson, intercepted, opportunity for Devonnie Reed to the goal line, and he is in. 19-yard return on a pick six for the Chippewas. Just a miscommunication there between Max Johnson and Coy Moore. He's on a drive route right here. And actually, Coy Moore is right. He's got to stop. He's got to stop, right? Man and zone, you have different rules on drive routes. Man, run to grass. See grass, run to it. Zone, you see it, you sit and give your numbers. You're going to see this drive route coming across the field, and that receiver is going to be looking out ahead of him, trying to see, are there linebackers ahead of me sitting in zone? Drive route's going to come this way. First action of the night for Nussmeyer. And he gets chased. We've got another flag out. In a moment of levity, we were talking with Jim McElwain before the game, and he referenced Nussmeyer, who's... That dog, Holding. quarterback coach of the Cowboys, was on McElwain's staff and it will be third down. as his offensive coordinator in Florida. And he said, yeah, I, I, I called Doug. I talked to him. I said, the first time number five gets in the game, we're sending the house at him. <laughs> Got a little pressure on him that time. They didn't send the house, though. Garrett, when he came out for warm-ups before he started getting loose, he made a beeline to midfield to give Jim McElwain a big hug. That was cool. Here's Corey Kiner. Doug Nussmeyer was a great player in his own right, by the way. Fourth round pick of the Saints in 94. He was the Walter Payton Player of the Year at Idaho in 1993. And this uh, LSU team joins Bowling Green as the only two teams with quarterbacks whose dads both played quarterback in the NFL. Troy Hairston is the injured Chippewa. Mention the story of Hairston, who is just such a likable person and a great football player in his own right. In fact, he had a game. Remember David Reese, the Florida linebacker? They had a game in high school. Harrison was at Seaholm High School in Birmingham, Michigan. 
David Reese was a fullback linebacker. Hairston was a fullback linebacker. And nearly every play, those two dudes went head-to-head. -head. Hairston outplayed him that night, even though he's only 5'11 and probably a little bit lighter than his 245 now back in high school. Reese goes on to the SEC, and now Hairston playing his second SEC opponent of the season. Pimpleton back to receive. Well, this can be a long invisible wall here for these guys. Take every second of this play clock. Quad's burning right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now run. Fair catch asked for. Pimpleton will handle it. More football action in 10 seconds. SEC Saturday night will take the uh, show on the road to Tuscaloosa next week. We were talking about this earlier. feel like Nick Saban has had plenty of ammunition to keep his guys motivated and defensively some letdowns, obviously, in the second half of Florida played really well. Um, it'll be another week of spirited practices, despite the fact that Alabama's number one with the bullet and undefeated. It's going to be a lot of, um, hmm, what's the right word? Loud noises after watching that film. LSU keep making plays on the defensive side of the ball. I've been most impressed. I mean, I, I know there's a lot of second stringers in there now, but I've, I've really been impressed with this defensive front. How violent they've been, how disruptive they've been, lived on the opposite side of that line of scrimmage all night. Jarrell Cherry and Bug Strong in on that stop. And eight sacks against McNeese. Sermon with the play fake bought him some more time and did not allow him to escape. Hey, I love the idea. All right, get your quarterback out, outside the pocket, on the run. Just great coverage on the outside once again. Cordell Flott working out there in the flats. Every receiver. Had a Tiger glued on him. 13 sacks over the last two games for LSU. Is That's that ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Four-man rush complete right into the waiting arms of Damone Clark. And the key will be to sustain that right into SEC play. To have your defensive front be that disruptive, hopefully get Ali Gay back and healthy at some point. Andre Anthony also limped off earlier. No Jay Ward tonight either. Yeah. A lot of pieces still missing, a lot of question marks uh, after tonight on the outside. If they can take that piece and translate that to conference play, that makes this team very, very dangerous. Mississippi State will be the first crack. The Mississippi State team threw for roughly 1,400 yards against them in their game last year. Yeah, they'll have about 70 opportunities to rush the yeah. passer in that game. <laughs> yeah. It was a record last year for State in the opener. So let's take a look at some SEC news and notes. Alabama mentioned they able to survive at Florida. Penn State up 21-17 on Auburn in Happy Valley. A&M's won 11 in a row. Aggies defense pitched a shutout. They, that defensive line, Cole, that D line comes to play. Well, they're going to have to lean on it until they get things worked out with Zach Calzada, a quarterback. But yes, to Marvin Leal and company, they can get it. Calzada, 19 of 33 today. Three touchdowns and a pick in a 34-0 blanking against New Mexico. Lopo's featured touchdown Terry Wilson, former Kentucky quarterback. Nussmeyer off his back foot fires. Really an opportunity there if Jeray Jenkins would have kept on it. He can just already see the difference. Nussmeyer a little quicker. One of the earlier games in the ALCS that year that they went on to win the World Series. He did not work a World Series game, he said, but 
never forget that ALCS game that I worked, just how loud the crowd was, how exciting everything. And I had to throw in a class question, right? Said, just kind of compare and contrast. He laughed at me and said, don't, don't even do that. <laughs> I, I wasn't part of the conversation, but I would love to hear the contrast between Fenway Park and Death Valley. Yeah. An iconic Fenway Park, a 34-yard punt that time. And you go to work at Fenway Park, you come to play at Tiger Stadium. That's a pretty cool combo. That's a bucket list for a lot of sports You've been fans. to Fenway Park? I have. I've been in the Green Monster during Ooh, a game. Inside of it? Yeah. yeah. What's in there? Humble Brown. Uh, a lot of dirt, a lot of dust. A uh, couple guys who work it, a little surly. Bostonians weren't real happy that I was in there. Uh -huh. uh, and Sharpie signatures on the concrete post back there. Did you sign it? I did. Wow. I did. Uh, I'm sure it's been spray painted over. Like as soon as we walked out, they spray painted. You guys painted. were like, wait, did you know who that was? No, no. But okay. you scrape it off. <laughs> you can watch the game from inside the Green Monster with little slits in the, uh, in the scoreboard. Daniel Richardson tries to go deep. Did you work the manual scoreboard while you were in there? Uh, listen, they weren't letting me touch anything while I was in there. I was afraid, though, that the cops that let us out on the field, we did it in the middle of the game, so like the sixth inning, we leave the left field corner, we walk out to the uh, to the scoreboard, and the guy goes, yeah, sure, somebody be out there to let you in. And I get about halfway there, I turn to my buddy, I'm like, what if this is a prank and nobody opens the door? <laughs> and the door didn't open until we set foot on the warning track, and sure enough, the door opens up, and we go, they're going to have to stop the game because these yahoos are out here banging on the door of the Green Monster. Bailey with the run. I'm surprised it took this long for us to see Daniel Richardson. I am too. Jim McWayne said before the game, he was he was very sensitive to keeping Jacob Sermon healthy, who's a guy that, that could win a lot of games for him in the back. But also just kind of understanding the way they still took a shot to the back of the head on the way down. Sullivan first team all conference couple years ago. Was third in the Mac in receiving yards. Sullivan, key part of this Central Michigan offense in his third year as a starter. Well, that's a great wow. sign. Got up like Lazarus. Ooh. I can see the helmet goes right on the outside of that knee, but popped right up, ran away from coach. Coach ran out there to <laughs> check on you. I'm good, man. See you. I'm good. So first down for Richardson in Central Michigan, and they'll go to the right side. But Cole, when they run to the left side, they run behind big Austrian Bernard Raymond. You don't see many guys like this in the MAC, do you? No, you don't see many guys like this in college football, even though there are a few programs that, like Bjorn Werner from Florida State, that yeah. he put together. But uh, started playing football at 14 years old in Vienna, Austria. Came to the United States as an exchange student. Pretty cool about that is that he lived with the Ferris family. Titan Ferris, who started the game next to him, is next to him right now at left guard. That's his foster brother that's playing next to him. So he obviously begins to play high school football with him and with the family, catches on a little bit. He was a wide receiver when he started playing in high school. Grew into a tight end, came into Central Michigan as a tight end, and then grew into a tackle. But guys, it goes a little bit further than that. This young man has some testing numbers that are off the charts. 33-inch vertical at 6'7", 305 pounds, a 450-pound bench. Now, you'll see more from an offensive lineman, but with that wingspan at 6'7", very impressive. And Jordan, how about this? Because we talked about this in the Alabama game last week with a different player. A 1-5-6, 10-yard split Woo. in his 40-yard dash. Now, I talked to a couple folks with NFL franchises that told me the average left tackle that has been drafted the last 10 years, their 10-yard split was a 1-8-1. They consider anything from a 175 and lower to be elite for an NFL draftable prospect. Eric Winston had a 167. Taron Armstead and Lane Johnson both had a 168. Again, a 156 10 yard split for Bernard Raymond. 6'7, 305. You know, we talked about McElwain 
on fourth and one, they're going to keep the offense on the field and get it. Remember how he said the gray shirt was the worst idea yeah. he'd had as a coach? It actually worked out pretty well for Bernard Raymond because in Austria there's compulsive military service. So he used his gray shirt year to go back to Austria, wow. put his military time in, about six months for males, less for females, come right back. Hey, coach, I'm good. <laughs> You've been back working out? And good, I tell you what. They don't just make bodies like that or that big, that long, that athletic. And, and there's a precedent here at Central Michigan. Eric Fisher, left tackle, yeah. is the number one overall draft pick. Well, listen, I'm just going to tell you guys, and not just because we're talking about him, but I, I've kind of been eyeing him the entire game. He's been going up against some good pass rushers yeah. here. This LSU football team, he has not just been flat out beaten in a one-on-one -on -one pass situation all night long. He has held his on the left side, but that pocket has been locked down this evening. He is a legitimate NFL prospect. Second and ten. This is Miles Bailey. He's got a first down. Just a little, just kind of a little down block there, blocking back for Bernard Raymond at the end of the round. The guy's got a ton of power, gets his hands inside, gets you locked out. Obviously, he can move. We mentioned that 10 yard split in the 40, but very athletic for that frame. Road grading on the left side, they go to the right side and a play made in the backfield on Marion Lukes by Dwight McLothern. Still nice movement on that double team there by Raymond. Love to see that drive off the football. Pad level's not been a problem for him. A lot of times you'll see these taller tackles being 6'7 is an issue. Boom, you see the drive off the football. Love it. Jordan talked about the shoots for a defensive lineman earlier. Offensive linemen go through them as well. Do they make that noise when they go through? Poof, poof, poof. Cole, Cole looks at Bernard Raymond like I looked at my oyster po' boy for lunch. Into the end zone. Too strong and incomplete. Alec Ward was the intended receiver. Where'd you get the po' boy? I got places. If you spend more time in town, we can take you there. We had some good Brussels the last two days, I will say that. All I know is it was under an interstate. Yeah. Long direction when she first pulled me aside. She said, you know all these people are following you. Nobody following the tight end. And a touchdown pass to Joel Wilson. So, Miss Pittman, good job getting him online. If he was on the field, maybe Wilson doesn't take it in from 18. A second touchdown pass tonight where it was just completely a blown coverage on the back end. We saw the long one earlier where Major Burns was in the wrong coverage. This one here, linebackers just completely lose sight of the tight end releasing to the boundary. Safeties went with the flowing receivers in the opposite direction and nobody there. Point after good from Marshall Meter. 12 play, 50 yard drive. Here in the fourth quarter. No onside, huh? She had a high school game, minute and yeah. nine seconds left. Down 14, team came back and won. Our great statistician, Greg Campbell, was on site for that one. Oh, Bishop Gorman blew the lead down in the desert last night. Fifty-four plays run by LSU. They've only run on 16 of them. Here's Corey Connor. Connor out of Roger Bacon High School in Cincinnati. He was Mr. Football in Ohio. Think about the great players they've had over the years that have earned that honor, whether it's Charles Woodson, Andy Katzenmoy, Maurice Claret, Mitch Trubisky, and then, what was that kid's name? Burrow. Oh, that one. Joe Burrow. Hey, he yeah. was all right. Turned out to be okay. 
We're going to see a... Oh! What a move by Kiner! Oh my God. And he sprints to midfield. It's like driving a in a Dodge Charger. Traffic rules do not apply. Honestly, you might just retire after this one. Hey, get out of the way! <laughs> wow. Corey Kiner. Uh, that wasn't very kind. Yeah, he works out. Yeah. Probably does a lot of hot yoga. <laughs> <laughs> Namaste. Get out of my way. He's doing some push press for sure. Oh, wow. I was impressed with the footwork first and then the strength. There he is again. Oh, no. Oh. He's trying to just end careers out here late in this game. He finished his high school career third in Ohio prep football history in scoring, rushing touchdowns and touchdowns. He had one game where he had eight touchdowns in a single game. I can see why. Yeah. You imagine being a high school kid trying to tackle this guy? Oh, that was just uh, one long ago. Beat him. Three chips bring him down. Cole, you think this offensive line kind of projecting forward? We've been talking a lot about the run game. Is this offensive line going to be physical enough to be able to consistently have a run game week in and week out? I don't, I don't think they're going to be that kind of a group, Jordan. Okay. I, I just don't think. I don't know. I, I think Ed Ingram has that in him. I think Shanahan maybe has it in him. I, I think Deculus is pretty crafty at times. But you get Chasen Hounds back tonight. He's looked pretty good. But part of that is you haven't had the same five in for many snaps together. Right. And didn't during fall camp. So. You know, going back to some of the stuff we were talking about with the run game earlier, I, I think the tempo helps you with that more than anything else. You, you look at what Ole Miss has done on the ground. I mean, how many people talk about Ole Miss last year as the best rushing team in the SEC? Not many, but they were. And a lot of that is because they go fast. They stress you in different ways. <laughs> cool. How about Austin Deculus? He gets up pumping up the crowd after coming out doing an injury. He's wanted a little more camera time. Big number 76 Ooh. got run into from behind. It's a get, little scare. Never want to get rolled up on. Getting him back was big, though. I mean, he's he, he's the veteran of that group. I think he's been starting for 11 years. So, product at Amamu, Louisiana. Marcus Dummerville, nephew of NFL longtime player Elvis Dummerville, now in at right tackle. Little throwback, and this one's off to the races. It's Coy Moore inside the five. 28 yard. After some sleight of hand from Garrett Nussbaum. Boy, I love the play design there. You leak out a player into the flats, you boot with him, get everybody to overflow, and then you just slip Coy Moore right behind those defenders. Watch this. It's going to crack down and then just stay right there. Everybody's going out with the tight end to the flats, flowing with the quarterback, and you throw right against the grain there. Nussmeyer's found his rhythm. Sixth play of this drive. Corey Kiner carrying the load at the beginning of the drive. And here's Kiner again with a spin move. Touchdown, LSU. All right, so if you're blessed with the ability to stiff arm someone into next Saturday, then another play runs someone over. Surely you're not fleet of foot to be able to spin move like this. Oh, well, yeah, okay. Some people have it all, you know? Talking to Jake Peach about Corey Connor, I said, is a surprise? Yeah, we can do that. Okay. That was, by the way, that segment there was the worst TikTok video I've ever seen in my life. Where are you guys going next week for Nation? I don't think we know yet. Oh, it hasn't been announced? You told so. me, but I can't say it out yeah. loud. Wherever you end up, then you'll end up in Tuscaloosa, thanks to our friends at Wheels Up, helping make travel easier. Jordan was in Gainesville for SEC Nation this morning and here tonight in plenty of time. There was some discussion. Cole and I uh, were running some errands earlier this afternoon. Bad thunderstorms in the area. I don't yeah. know if you were aware of this or not. 
and Cole said, gosh, I wonder if Jordan's going to be able to make it in. I said, I wonder if Central Michigan's going to be able <laughs> to make it in. That's a great point. I mean, they're flying in day of game, which is very what happens rare. If you get I mean, what happens if they couldn't land? Or they get delayed three hours? Didn't, you're drinking a lot of Red Bull, and we're, it's going <laughs> deep into the night. SEC after dark. Before they take off, coach is like, hey, guys, I'm actually going to need you to put your shoulder pads and helmet on. We're going to walk straight off the plane onto the field. Yeah, we're, <laughs> get, we're going to get there late. Um, I was talking with some folks today about the decision to travel in day game. Obviously, it had no impact on Central Michigan play today. And they came to that decision because of some hang-ups with hotel room availability in the area. And Jim McElroy said, let's go down day a game. The last time folks around these parts remember that is after Hurricane Katrina, when the Tennessee game got moved to a Monday night, volunteers flew in that Monday. And no hotel rooms needed. Of course, then no hotel rooms available. So that was also part of it. Uh, then, um, and that was an incredible game, incredible atmosphere. Fly back to Knoxville. There is no rule against this in the SEC. Coaches have all sorts of different philosophies, right? Jimbo Fisher wants to leave first thing Thursday morning to get on the road. Right. Is there any benefit to traveling in day a game? Do you think people would consider it? I don't think it? so. I, I mean. I, I, I feel bad now getting off a plane, even back then. I mean, you, you stick these big 300-pound guys in seats on a plane, and, and then you, your back tightens up. I mean, Cole is an offensive lineman. Cole, you want to step out of a plane and play same day? No, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to, especially depending on the duration of the trip. But yeah. Coach McElwain told us last year that they pretty much bust to every game that they play. Yeah, and day of game. They just went Saturday morning, and some, some trips were longer than others. You take out of Friday night issues away. Show and go, baby. It's one of those luxuries that a lot of Power Five college football players don't think about and don't understand. That you know, lower lower group of five schools, FCS schools. A lot, a lot of those guys are busting a lot further than two and three hours to go get to their games that they're going to play. Another big burst to the outside and room to rumble. Tell you what, we did it right in junior college. So we obviously in junior college out in Northern California bust everywhere, day of game, and stay over. And we were handed our breakfast and our only meal every morning, Saturday morning, it was McDonald's. Crush some McDonald's, four hours on a bus, walk off, throw your pads on, and get to playing. Did you have a choice? Could you go McGriddle if you wanted to, or was it McMuffin across the No, court? you took whatever they gave you. That was probably made five hours previous. The JV on Stepney freshman running back gets another opportunity. Wow, Mickey D's, huh? Yeah. I thought you were going to say you're playing in junior college. Instead of McDonald's, you got McDowell's, right? So did the Golden Arches, you got the Golden Arc. But never look a gift horse in the mouth, I suppose. California. I don't think they have McDowell's on there. Surprised you guys didn't get Carl's Jr. I mean, we could do this all day. I love a good Carl's Jr. On second and nine. Doesn't get all over the place. It doesn't belong in your face. <laughs> it's, got a, it's got a good vehicle for the food. It's, it it is, yeah. Good fun. Keeps everything on there. Speaking of good buns, Cole got on uh, some... Uh, gymnastics apparatus this morning. What else makes you think of Buns? <laughs> Third and seven now. And Richardson fires complete. No, but you, honestly, Cole, the balance beam, was it harder than you thought it would be? We got a flag after the play. Getting on the balance beam was, yes. <laughs> yeah, you struggled with that. <laughs> it was not easy. Olivia Dunn was your guest this morning, member of the LSU Gymnastics the team. The result of the play is a first down. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense number 11, his first of the game. Six apparatus today. Just so you could get some leakage from some of her social media followers? I, it was actually just to kind of calm our boy Jordan Rogers down with, with, with his social media presence. So just to kind of show him that, hey, there are other people out there that are, that are bigger and better. So sometimes you get a little humble brag. Just show you that, that other people around the conference are, are, have a lot of high following as well. He would respond, but he's currently posting to his Instagram oh, story. No, I was just I'm looking. I was like, you could have found a couple other it, so. photos that have more likes. Second and five. You know what it is. The one. Oh, oh, oh my God. What a grab 
by Pimpleton. Man, that's a big time play. I don't know if they're going to give him credit for it, saying he was out of bounds. He's lobbying for it. Let's see this. The ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. Third down. One hand. Oh, come on. Oh, does that right foot hit? I think the right foot dragged for it a looked good like it. two yards towards the sideline. Check the receipts. I saw a divot there by the sideline. I feel like that was a catch. Yeah, look at the grass come up. Tell, controlled yeah. it all the way through, right? I mean, yes, controlled the ball for sure. Here we go. Come on. Let's see this. Right foot. Does it hit? Well, if it didn't hit, then he's levitating. That's in. Come yeah. on. Give it to him. What a catch. That was a silly grab. Wow. Give it to him, then he can put it on his IG. Bet you you get more than 20,000 likes. Freshman out of Carroll City High School in Miami. He's been in the program now. Okay, so you have to excuse me. Like, redshirt freshman, he's that's in the, but the math. Like, everybody got a free year last year, right? Yeah. So we're class, no classifying idea. guys. Played in three games in 19. In 20, he made four starts. Uh, high school football is pretty good around Miami-Dade County. Richardson rewrote the record book. Goes to the end zone incomplete. Dade County record 9,791 yards in his high school career at Carroll City, which produces Division I talent year after year after year. Four-year start at a 3-6 GPA. Cole, I'll give you some Carroll City alums. You ready? I'm ready. Santana Moss and his brother. Danny Tartable. Oh, yeah. Kansas City Royals. Good rip. Flo Rida. Maybe a good song. How about Rick Ross? Is that more your speed? Huh. <laughs> what was that last comment? Huh. Straight ahead. Baby back. One more. We got another one. <laughs> what is happening? People are hoping that was a nine-minute break. Fourth down, Central Michigan will stay on the field with the offense. <laughs> Pressure up the middle. Richardson trying to buy some time. And incomplete. Can LSU, and I know we're late in this game, and we've gotten second, third string guys in, but the story of the game to me was LSU's defensive pressure in the first half. Can they continue to bring this kind of pressure against SEC opponents? Well, I think so, yes, schematically, totally. But Andre Anthony, who led the team in sacks last year, was off to a great start this year, limped off the field earlier. Ollie Gay is out this game. Who knows about his health moving forward? So, yeah, they have some question marks on the outside, but I tell you what, the, the play of the interior defensive line is much improved. And if you get the energy and speed and want to out of Stingley in that secondary, yeah, this defense can continue to be very scary. Is it fair to say that Derek Stingley's forced fumble was the play of the game? Yeah. Set the tone, right? You got a guy that, honestly, he could come out here and play 50% and just kind of go through the motions, and he'll probably still be a first-round draft pick. You know? Yeah. Um, he chooses not to do that, right, early in this football game. I think that set a tone. I think that set a precedent for what was expected out of everybody. And when it comes from a player, it means so much more than when a coach says, hey, I need more effort. We were talking about that with Ed Ogeron. He said, in years past, if I didn't see that from a player or something from a coach I didn't like, I would air him out in front of everybody. He said, I've changed my ways now. And I, I got to do my research first. I got to figure out why is this guy not making these plays? Is he not been prepped properly? Is he not been drilled on this? And if it is an effort thing, then I go to him one on one. Come by the office and let's talk about this one on one. And we'll talk about how you're drilled, how you're supposed to make plays, and whether or not you choose to make those plays. Ed Ogeron is more involved 
on both sides of the ball than he has been in years past trying to get things organized for his coordinators who are both coordinating for the first time. And he said, if it's something I don't know how to do, I'm not going to get my hands dirty. But I know how to get organized. I know how to deliver messages. And I know how to get my guys on task. And they're on task from the get-go tonight. He knows how to set the right direction, right? He didn't have to micromanage Joe Brady and Dave Aranda. Right. Early on, maybe, yes. But once they hit their stride and he was confident, he let them do their thing. And he will do that again for this offense once he gets the ship headed in the right direction like it did tonight. 49 to 21 is the final tonight. Max Johnson, 372 yards, five touchdowns.